not so funny. Did you happen to get pregnant by going to... Look, this is just a total shot in the dark here. That Ivy League spank bank over on Wabash? Oh, please, God, tell me you were the janitor and you remember my face. Honey, don't you get it? I'm the father of your child. And you're welcome. You okay? You, you look a little shocked. I feel like I've been electrocuted. I can even smell my hair burning. Oh, it smells more like apricot to me. It's nice. Stop sniffing me. How could you possibly make a donation at an Ivy League sperm bank? You know, it's actually kind of a funny story. Oh, does it end with you not really being the donor? No. <laughs> when I got out of college, it's a junior college. I'll take it. Go on. Anyway, I see this bunch of ads from these places offering good money for... You did this all over town. Well, not all over town. But your daughter should probably move out of Chicago if you don't want to risk having retards for grandkids. <laughs> that some woman would think she was getting a superior set of jeans and instead she was getting the sea monkeys you donated? With all the medical experiments I got paid for that involved radiation, I figured I was shooting blanks anyway. Radiation? All right. You can't live your life scared. Anyway, you know, I just heard that this Ivy League joint paid five times what the regular ones do. Plus... Buddy of mine bets me a C note I don't get in. Well. I never walk away from a bet, you know. Oh, admirable trait. Here's hoping my daughter inherited that one. All it took was a fake Yale ID, a fruity shirt, and a pair of loafers. <laughs> You're lucky, too, because you got my very last deposit. Because a month later, I came down with hepatitis. <laughs> So is she cute? You, you got any pictures? It was nice meeting you, Mr. Caprio. Why, you, you're leaving? I see what's going on. I went out with girls like you. Were they aware of it? <laughs> I don't get it. With those legs and that accent, you could have had a kid like a regular person. Could have married some fancy lawyer, lived happily ever after. He was a doctor, actually. A real one. <laughs> we were engaged for two years when he suddenly informed me he didn't want children. So... I decided to have the child and the career I wanted on my terms. I misjudged you. You saw what you wanted and you went for it, and I respect that. Thank you. But you obviously realized you made a horrible mistake, and here you are, because you need a man in your life. <laughs> are you serious? I know. I mean, I don't date chicks with kids, but, you know, seeing how this one is my own, and you... <laughs> You are smoking hot. Goodbye, Mr. Caprio. I don't want to see you again, ever. Do I make myself clear? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, normally I don't hear that till after a girl slept with me, but I guess in a way we kind of did. Oh, no, we didn't. Doesn't matter. Image is already in my head. <laughs> oh, yours too, huh? And there, it's gone. Uh, that's okay, because I was already telling my friends about it. She went out of here faster than that nun who surprised me in the shower. So what do you guys say, pizza? What's the kid's name? Well, I don't know. They sent a different driver every time. Your kid? Oh, I didn't ask. Does she have any of those shoes with the lights in them? <laughs> Don't give me that. I didn't get my ball back so that you could disease it up with God knows what's on your hands. God doesn't know what's on my hands. <laughs> Eddie, you have a daughter. I can't believe you're not curious about her. I'm curious and I don't even care. I'm curious. I mean, the kid's half me. Gotta be at least half fun. <laughs> even with that ice bucket of a mom. <laughs> You really should try to see her. Nah. Nah, I mean, what has she got attached to me? I, I, I'd have to make the whole place child-friendly. Nothing could stay. <laughs> Especially you. I think you're afraid to meet her. I'm not afraid to meet her. I think he's afraid of the ice, Mommy. 
I'm not afraid of anything, especially some snooty museum broad. Who does this woman think she is? She comes in here, she tells me I got a kid, then tells me I can't see her. I mean, what gives her the right to do that? The weight of the law? <laughs> Plus, morally, she's got a pretty... Enough! No pizza for you. I'm going to find this girl. And one trip to small claims court and suddenly you're a lawyer. Oh, excuse me, Dr. Caprio. <laughs> so, you want to hog down his place? I'm way ahead of you. I think I finally washed this day off of me. Oh, Hopper's coming up the drive. I still don't know what I'm going to tell her. Well, don't worry, because I'm here. Now, remember, the key to a good lie is specificity, and it must be elaborate. The more detailed and absurd it is, the less likely anyone will ever believe that you're making it up. Hey, guys, what's up? Your father's dead. <laughs> what? Dead. <laughs> well, I must be going. <laughs> Dead? When? How? That's all they told me, darling. I am so sorry. Are you okay? No, I'm not. I'm never going to meet my father. Ever. Horace probably left something here. Like his balls. <laughs> oh, my God. Finally. What are you doing here? How did you get my address? Did you know that Chicago has got 15 museums? And not only did you have to work at the last one I checked, but you should just see some of these cross-eyed chimpanzees that these museum bozos consider hot chicks. You have to leave now. I just get one look at her. Mom, I don't feel like going out tonight after hearing my dad's dead. Dead? Who's this? Holy crap. <laughs> You're beautiful. About your father. My condolences. <laughs> um, I'm, I, I'm your father's brother, uh, uh, Teddy. <laughs> your mom invited me by to soften the news.